John, you've said um, customers are hard work. Uh, Clients are hard work. Well, that, that's Why? what customers tell me. Right. That customer the, and, and this is all from your research, yes, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, customers are hard work because they're hard to deal with. Um, we talked earlier about, well, do they actually really know what they want? And part of it is actually managing expectation. What are your expectations? And I, it just takes me back to this whole notion of what's a transaction? We've got to get that meeting of the minds. And if we don't have that meeting of the minds, of course people are going to be hard work because you're not going to do what I'm expecting you to do and vice versa. Yep. And that, in essence, is at the root of a lot of the issues in the industry. You know, we, we haven't got a meeting of the minds. W- would you agree with that? Um, yep. We do have other problems as, as well. There's, <laughs> there's multiple other issues. Oh, there's lots of issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But meeting of the minds, yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, yeah. I have a, I have a big problem with the whole NZ three nine one and and how everything starts at the top. Yeah. I have a problem with how um, the digital framework for a construction projects never thought about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and ev- every project I go on, or I go right. Okay, so you have a work breakdown structure. This is what I call diamond project modeling. You got to. This is how you're going to break your work or your scope of works into into these manageable chunks of work. Yep. How are you then going to relate that to um, the cost? Yep. Mm-hmm. So then you get to a cost breakdown structure. Yep. Right. Um, I can tell you with confidence about 99.99% of construction projects in New Zealand, the work breakdown structure will not marry up with the cost breakdown structure. There's your fundamental things breaking down. Yep. Yep. So there's there, there's already miscommunication between your programmer works and your quantity surveyor of how you're actually um, measuring progress on site to make payment claims <laughs> and, and add to that um, well this is what I intended for the project yeah and this is what I heard not necessarily the same thing 100% yeah uh, and so we, we haven't got that um, that expectation aligned and yeah. so when, when we've got misaligned expectations uh, what do you get a bit of friction yeah right a bit of dysfunction well I yes we do get a lot of that but um, change is the only constant Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And, and and from my perspective, why do why do big construction companies get paid a shit ton of money? You know, why do they make the margin which which gets eroded? Yeah. So change management is part of the key responsibility. And and I think we manage change really, really, really badly in New Zealand. We're not if you had a scope of work and you gave it to a construction company and said, I'm not gonna change anything, I'm not gonna you know, you're gonna stick to that program, they'll actually build it on time. Yep. You you introduced change into the mix, yeah? Your territorial authority gave you your consent late because of which now you've got to reorganize your entire resource pool. Yes. All right? Um, and then now you're going to run late, but then you've got to communicate that back up to your client. And your client's going to go, nah, I'm not going to accept that. And and he has a great project management team that's going to... That's <laughs> and, and the entire only job is to protect the client, hmm. even though they they say they're independent and they're perceived to be independent. They're not. Yeah. So, so there's a there's a whole raft of issues, and, oh. and 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 a big one for me is change management. How do we manage change better? Uh, and man. and maybe this transactional competence is part of the solution. I'm not. I'm I, not sure. I, I, I'm convinced that it is, Andy. Yeah. Um, but it's about leadership as well. I, if we actually tossed out the notion that leadership is about personality. And I'm in charge. You do what you you, you told. That's a, it's a terrible th- concept. Th- that's that's not going to work. Yeah. But what if we actually started to collaborate? And I touched on this before about there is a, a a cycle in a transaction, and if you overlay that with the the transactional personalities, then getting the right people performing at the right part of the transaction is critical. And if we're looking to manage expectations, sometimes those right people aren't there. And so if you can't get the right people communicating the right things at the right time, of course you're going to get miscommunication. Of course you're going to get dysfunction. And that's part of the issue. 
I'm, I'm not saying that you know contract and everything like that is is not important. It is important, but it's a combination of things: getting the the documentation right, getting the structures right, getting the the, the right people in the right place, getting communication going at the same time, and when you've actually got the right people acting in the right part of the transaction, then that's actually leadership. See, leadership isn't about one person being in charge all the time. It's about who's appropriate for this part of the transaction. They're the ones who should be leading. We have a saying, you know, where are we in the transaction? Who's leading? That's an interesting take on it. Yeah. So how would you design an org structure around that? Uh, it's not about org structure. You don't? Be because quite often the org structure is one of the impediments that's stopping us from actually achieving what we want to achieve. So what are you suggesting? Get get rid of an organisational structure? Not necessarily. I'm just saying don't be constricted into the silos that, well, look, I'm a project manager or, or I'm the general manager, whatever, and, and that's not my job. No, we're in this together. So what part? And if, if we're up at the top of the transaction cycle where it's time to invent the transaction, those people should be fully in, informed and and taking the lead in that but when it comes time to implement get out of the way because you, you're actually probably not the right person to be implementing so how do you know if you're the right person or not uh, we can take a quiz and, and just give you an idea of transactional personalities Th that's a completely different conversation yeah. altogether so, yeah yeah okay. can, can i give you an example sure on one of my projects, we, we didn't go out to tender, literally pulled a team together right from the get-go, and the construction company was part of that, and so was the, the, the foreman or the, the site manager who was going to be leading that site. And his personality is one of, he's full of ideas, you know, he's an ideas person, which was great at the time we were starting to design the building, because he had to implement it, we might as well get that input. Yeah. Problem was, that personality wasn't actually as helpful when it was time to implement. implement it because he was looking to tweak all the time. And and there were times when I had to literally say to him, hey, listen, I'm the client, this is your job, just do the job, because he had to get pulled out of that, oh, it's time to tweak, I, I can make it better. No, we've got a consent, we don't want to change anything. You ref referenced that before, didn't you? Yep, change is yeah. the only constant. Correct. Correct. So personality plays a part. It does, yeah. So, so what you're suggesting is all these inventor personalities are all the designers. Yep. Uh, not necessarily, but... They create. They, they create. And other personalities are good at just getting on and doing. Yep. But those doers, if they're involved when the ideas are coming up, sometimes they're not helpful. You know, so it's getting the right person at the right stage of a transaction. And that's where, what I talk about leadership. It's not just the, the person in charge. It's actually taking responsibility and accountability for our part in that transaction and actually leading that part on the basis that we're actually cooperating together. So you know, we, we take that collective responsibility. Yeah, I'll, I love the idea for collective responsibility. Yeah. No, that's some. You that's know, definitely how, some. how many times have you seen? Oh, that's not my job. You know, yeah. I don't care. You know, that's up to them how they do it. Well, that's the sort of attitude that actually makes things fall apart. You're not wrong there. John. I, I, I'm not telling you anything new, am I? <laughs> not really. No. 